So much of being a female entrepreneur is living in that state of not knowing. And so I think to be empowered, you have to have confidence that you can figure it out. Yeah. You have, to have confidence that you do have power. And just that mindset is what I believe is very empowering. Welcome to the Empowered Woman Podcast, the number one show on visibility strategies for women entrepreneurs. If you want to get empowered to be seen, stand out on social media, stages, TV, and more to make an impact with your voice and business, you're in the right place. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Marcia Spurk, and I'm your host, professional singer and visibility strategist. Welcome again, and let's dive into today's episode. One thing I don't talk about enough is the impact podcasting has had on my professional life and how it opened so many doors for me. So if you want to start a podcast or you want to level up your current one, then you need to work with my podcast strategist, Juliana Barbati. She owns a podcast marketing and production agency, and her team takes care of everything from editing and optimizing to scheduling for you, making this process a breeze for you. She's seriously the best. All her info is in the show notes. You can go to julianabarbati.com and tell her I sent you. Hi, Angie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Marta. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, of course. Well, I'm super excited for us to chat for you to share with us more about your entrepreneurial journey and the amazing things you got going on. So why don't you tell us who you are and what you do and we'll jump right in. Yeah. So I'm Angie Moody. I'm the founder and CEO of Ruby Money. We're smart accounting and bookkeeping software that helps self-employed entrepreneurs or anyone with self-employed income or a side hustle manage the financial aspects of running that business, including making tax payments a breeze. Mm, so important for entrepreneurs, for sure. And something that not many of us like dealing with. So you're making it easier for us. How did you get started with this? Were you always in this industry and then created the software? Tell us more. Yeah, definitely. So I've been in tech for most of my career. I started my career right out of undergrad at Microsoft. I actually got to work on video games there, which is very different than taxes, but really grounded myself in product design and understanding what made technology accessible to people and how to build a really great user experience. And then over the next kind of 10 or 15 years of my career, I worked at a bunch of different really large tech companies. I was at Capital One, where I helped build their new consumer bank app several years ago. And that was really a crash course in understanding how people, their relationship with their money, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and also just the massive opportunity that technology provides to help people improve their finances. Sometimes that technology is used for the bad, right? And helps people get into debt a little bit easier than it should be. But there's also amazing things technology allows us to do in terms of really educating ourselves and creating automations that take the mental hassle away from doing things that maybe we don't want to do, but we know we need to do to support ourselves financially and have good habits. And so really grounded myself in that education and learned from some of the best minds in financial services. I also spent some time at Facebook and Instagram really working with small business owners and those who built their livelihood on Instagram, whether they were a creator or a shoemaker or a stationary designer. There was this explosion, as we all know, of in the creator economy and of people launching their own businesses on Etsy and Instagram. And with that came all of the questions of like, what do I do with this money? What do I do with this income? How do I grow my business? Do I need to hire employees? And so really spent a lot of time listening and understanding the plight of the new generation of entrepreneur, both the, the amazing highs and, and sometimes the low lows. I myself, after spending 15 years in corporate America, got a bit burnt out. I felt like my creativity was being zapped. I wasn't able to be as present of a parent as I wanted to be. And frankly, I wanted something, I wanted more autonomy in my life, both in how I built my career and in my personal life. So I ditched the corporate life in 2000. 19, not quite knowing what was in store, but no, I needed a change. And I stumbled upon freelancing. I started doing independent product consulting for a bunch of small tech companies. And one, I loved it. 
I was making great money. The work was really meaningful. And I really enjoyed the opportunity to contribute my expertise to a small growing company. And so for, I became a solopreneur. Two things happened when that happened. The first one was I had the O moment when I had to figure out taxes for the first time. You know, I had to get my own health insurance. I had to figure out my retirement plan and I had to figure out taxes up until that point as a salaried worker, my company did all of that. If I had to buy a new computer, I did it with my company card. My company paid my payroll taxes. My company told me how much I should put in retirement. My company facilitated my health care. So all of those experiences, I went through them for the first time myself. And being a product designer and being a technologist, each step of the way, I was just shocked at how difficult the experience was how embarrassed and ashamed I was at how much I was messing it up. And at the end of the year, that first year that I was a a solo consultant, I had to go and file taxes and I owed so much in taxes. I hadn't yet contributed to a retirement account for the first time in my kind of adult career. And I found out after the fact, because it all happened really fast, right? Like all of a sudden you have to file taxes. You have no time, right? They're like, send me your documents. It's time to go. I found out after the fact that I overpaid my taxes by about $12,000 that I could have retained as profit by not doing just some basic things. So that really enraged me. At the same time, I was really figuring out what I was going to do next with my career. And I knew I didn't want to go back to a big company. And I really wanted to build something from scratch. I really wanted to continue being independent. And that experience happened at the same time. And I realized as I was talking to other people in my position, other solo entrepreneurs and small business owners, that this was a problem everybody experienced and the solutions on the market were not great. And so moments collide. And I decided if I'm the best person in the world to tackle this problem based on the experiences that I had, and I felt the pain myself so much. So that was kind of when the idea for Ruby Money was born. And I decided to jump in and start my own company and Here we are two and a half years later. It's been a wild ride, but I don't regret it for a minute. And I feel so convicted that this is exactly what I've been meant to be doing. Um, As you know, like there's been hard moments. Imposter syndrome is real. Financially, it can be challenging to be an entrepreneur. And so I've been through all of it, but I am just incredibly lucky and feel proud of what I've been able to build and excited to share more of that journey with you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. This is so inspiring with your background and then hitting those roadblocks. Like you said, we all do. And some of us have more information than others, but it's still tough, especially coming from corporate for several years where everything's taken care of, but then you don't have the same freedom. So it's, you're having to learn. It's a huge learning curve. Now, Before anything, I'm super curious, what inspired the name Ruby Money? Oh, yeah, I love that. You know, it's so funny. So many people have named their kids Ruby lately, but (laughs) so I think two things. One, personally, I just love gemstone colors. Like you can see my couch behind me. Like if I could decorate my whole house and like gemstone colors, I would. So I've always just been attracted to this idea of gems being a precious item, being something that we really need to take care of, similar to like our money and our careers. And then I also always knew that what we were building was meant to be personal and built for you and feel like you had somebody on your side that really understood what you were going through and that cared for your money and your livelihood as much as you do. And so everyone always talks about, I just need an accountant. I need somebody who really gets me. And Ruby is that hip, modern accountant that understands the complexities of taxes and accounting but also lives in the modern world and understands what a, what a modern online solo business owner goes through. So that was my inspiration. <laughs> oh, I love that. And it's so pretty too. And I love your logo. It goes beautifully with the name too. Now, what exactly does Ruby Money do? Because you mentioned, you know, in your own experience with leaving $12,000 on the table because you didn't know any better. What are some of the things that entrepreneurs could be doing that they don't really know? And that Ruby Money could be helping them with. And how does the platform actually work? Yeah. So the headline is, I prevent anyone from making the same mistakes that I made. And your number might not be 12,000. It might be 4,000. It might be 20,000. But yeah. everybody, every dollar of profit that you earn as a self-employed business owner is liquid gold. And you want to preserve as much of that as possible. And so what we've built is a mobile app. It's a very simple mobile app. 
and it connects to your bank account and creates a system. It tracks all of the income that you've earned as a self-employed entrepreneur. It tracks your expenses and categorizes them as eligible write-offs. We'll talk a little bit about write-offs as that's one of the big mistakes and misconceptions that solo entrepreneurs make, but it automates the whole process of identifying and tracking write-offs and it estimates and pays your taxes for you. So we'll talk a little bit about that because those were some of the mistakes that I made. It was not understanding the taxes that I would need to pay and making those payments on time and not understanding what a write-off was, what deductions were available to me as a solo business owner and maximizing those opportunities. It, think of it as a smart bookkeeping app. The smart part is that it does the work for you. Okay. Solo business owners don't want to spend time in spreadsheets. No. They don't want to download their bank statements. And they probably don't want to be on the phone every month with an accountant or a bookkeeper. No. You want to really maximize your time building your business and working on the things that bring you joy and fill your cup. And Ruby Money is really that automated accounting and bookkeeping service that takes care of your taxes and is designed to really let you get on with the things that you really want to spend your time doing. Okay, so does this completely replace then having a bookkeeper and a CPA and you could just do your taxes yourself? So what we found is most solo entrepreneurs or people that are leaving the corporate world to start consulting or become a fractional exec or sort of side hustle, they don't have an accountant Mm -hmm. or CPA or a bookkeeper. They're probably not even sure like what they do. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. Right? You're totally. just like, your idea is like, I think I need something. And if you did hire a CPA to do your taxes, you probably talk to them like once a year mm-hmm. and you upload a bunch of docs and then they come back to you with a report and they sign their name on the dotted line. And so problem number one is kind of, I don't know what I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what things I need to do, what my obligations are what that practice should look like. And so I think a lot of people do with their initial thought is I need to go get a guy for that. Mm -hmm. And those guys are expensive. And they usually talk in terms that maybe you don't understand, that maybe make you feel a little stupid. They use intimidating language and the costs are really quite high. And so I think if you're launching a restaurant or you're launching a retail store, there are business types where it's incredibly important to get an accounting team in place. But for most modern workers who are, consulting and freelancing and side hustling, it's a little bit overkill. So for that group, yes, to answer your question, we replace the need to hire a bookkeeper or an accountant. We leverage the amazing advances that we've had in the last few years in technology to be able to access your data and do really smart calculations. And then we layer on top some human support. So we do offer our members check-ins where they can get advice if they have questions about, hey, what business entity should I be? Do I owe taxes? I'm happy to continue talking a little bit about the app, but I think what's important to even understanding if a service like Ruby Money is a good fit for you is really understanding the why behind it. What are the obligations that you have as a solo business owner? What are the big mistakes that solo business owners make? And how can you get ahead of those, whether you use our service or not? I just think it's important. One of our mission is to really just empower and educate the next generation of entrepreneurs. So Maybe I'll pivot into that if that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Tell us more about the write offs, the illusions of what can I write off or not? Because that's a big thing for sure, like you mentioned. So tell us why. Yeah. And I definitely don't want to bore your audience. I have a lot of content on our website that goes into this in detail, but I'll demystify, I don't know, like three of the things that we hear we get asked the most about that I think are just really critical to gaining some confidence and understanding. Mm -hmm. The first is what taxes do you pay and how do they change when you become Mm self-employed? So when you become self-employed, usually that's consider you're considered a sole proprietor. All that means is you're making money on your own. Some sole proprietors will decide to form an LLC, which is a limited liability company, or you can choose not to. That's a legal designation. We can talk about that later, but it doesn't impact your taxes. What does happen though is any money that you make from a cell phone from any source, whether it's an Airbnb or selling a course online or a client paying you money, you're responsible for withholding taxes for that income and submitting those payments to the IRS on a regular basis. You pay income taxes. You also pay what's called the self-employment tax, which is a flat 15.3%, which is your social security and Medicare. When you're at a company, your company pays that for you, right? When you're self-employed, you pay it yourself. So both that federal income and that self-employment tax 
it's your responsibility to remit those payments to the government since you don't have a company doing it for you. And that's what's called quarterly taxes. So if anyone, you hear anyone talk about quarterly taxes, oh, you're self-employed now, you're a business, you have to pay quarterly taxes. That's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. The government says four times a year, quarter-ish, we want you to take a, a guess at what you've earned this year, what your profit is, and what you think you owe in taxes, and send that money to us. And then at the end of the year, when you file your taxes... We're going to ask you to fill out a Schedule C, which is just a form that goes along with your personal tax return. And on that form, you're going to true it all up. You're going to tell us what you actually owed, what your expenses were, how much your estimated tax payments are, and then you're going to get the amount that you have left over that you owe. Now, if you don't make those estimated tax payments, which is very common, a lot of people don't make those estimated tax payments, a few things happen. One is you get that bill from the IRS when you go to file your taxes in April and you don't have that money. Yeah, That money's gone. You've already spent that money. And that gets a lot of people into debt and they have to go on payment plans and it just really screws up their personal and their plans for their business. Mm -hmm. The second thing that happens is you accrue penalties. A while ago, when interest rates were really low, it was not that big of a deal. But interest rates now are high and the IRS is charging 8% interest on any unpaid quarterly tax payments. This is so boring, but so important. Mm -hmm. So to give you an example, if you make $75,000 in self-employed income and you live in California, you're probably going to owe about $30,000 in taxes. If you don't make those tax payments until you go to file your taxes at the end of the year, you're going to pay three, $4,000 in penalties on top of the tax bill you already owe. So it's really important to, as you earn money as a freelancer or solo entrepreneur, to set money aside for those quarterly tax payments and make those tax payments. That's the first thing our app does. It estimates what your tax rate is. It keeps track of what you make, and it makes those quarterly payments for you and helps you understand what you're going to owe. So there's no like surprises at the end of the year. But anyone can do that. Anyone can set up a separate savings account can move money aside every time you get paid. Anyone can submit those payments on the IRS. It's just a pain in the butt and it's easy to forget. And so what Ruby Money does is it's kind of a set it and forget it. It kind of automates that saving and paying process for you. So that's the biggest one. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad we're having this conversation because one of the things that I grew really resentful over in building my business online over the years is every turn you take, somebody's talking about making some whatever, 20, 30K, 40K months, weeks, whatever. And I feel like, especially for the people that are not looking into the taxes, they don't understand that, yeah, that money is great, but you also need to be thinking about this. And that's when they get in the sticky situations that you just made of. I, I can't tell you how many people I have met that had six-figure years, but they had nothing to show for. So they go out on the internet and they say, I received, right? I sold $100,000 or more, but nobody knows what's going on in the behind the scenes. How much do you actually owe to the IRS? Do I want to learn from you and hire you as a coach, you know, or whatever it is when you don't even know how to manage that? So I'm so glad that we're having this conversation because so many people are hell-bent on making that money, but what are you doing with that money? Yes. Not only in terms yes. of expenses, but you have to report to the government. It's not all yours. So well, more importantly, I think, and I was going to talk about Rios, but I'm going to talk about this next is really, what is your profit for your business? Mm -hmm. And that really starts with how do you price yourself? Yeah. That's exactly that point. For every thousand dollars that you bring in, what's your formula? And so is just 20% of that go to fund your monthly expenses, your software subscriptions, the virtual assistants you hire? your bougie coaching masterminds that you're a part of, right? All of these things that we need to prevent ourselves from burning out. Mm -hmm. What percentage of every dollar you're bringing every month do you need to cover those? Mm -hmm. And then taxes for most people is the single largest expense unless you have materials that you're using cost of goods sold. Because taxes will be anywhere from 27 to 45% based on how much you're making. And so if you're bringing in $1,000, a lot of people, like 450 of that is done, mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. So knowing what that percentage is allows you to back into what you actually need to make and then what you actually need to charge for our import project. And so if you're going to make that $1,000, 45% is going to taxes. Okay, let's do simple math. You have 55% left over. 
If you're spending another $300 a month on expenses, okay, great. That's another 30% gone. So now you've got 75% of that $1,000 has already been spoken for. You have no optionality there. And so that 25%, does that cover your mortgage? Does that cover what you need from your life? Can you pay yourself first? Then also, are you putting money aside for retirement? Mm -hmm. Retirement is so incredibly important as a solo entrepreneur to create that safety net for yourself so that you can take time off when you want. You can think about your career and make this something that is sustainable for a long time. So the app is all designed in percentages, particularly for this purpose, because we don't make a set amount every month and every year as an entrepreneur. Your earnings go up and down. And so your taxes and what you pay yourself are going to go up and down. And so having a good grounding on this percentage of like how much of each dollar I make is going to taxes, is going to retirement, is going to cover my expenses it really changes how your brain works. And what I've seen it really do is people immediately raise their prices. They're like, wait a second. (laughs) Once they see that. That's a good way to take imposter syndrome. (laughs) They can communicate that to their clients. They can say, look, Marta, I would love to do this project for you for $75 an hour, but I pay $15 an hour in taxes. Mm -hmm. So maybe we should split that. How about you help me cover some of my taxes? Or it's important to save for retirement. So $10 of my hourly rate goes to retirement. And so educating the world, because most of us don't understand this. Most of us don't hire freelancers. So being able to educate your clients so you don't have that imposter syndrome, you have the data to really back it up, is a really important tool to sort of have. So that's the biggest mistake I've seen people make is they don't understand their profit formula. They think that's something that complex big business owners do. Right. And because of that, they underprice themselves or they overspend right? On their expenses, like you said. Both. (laughs) Yes. Oh, I hit my $30,000 a month, but I have $2,000 to show for it because I spent 20 grand on Instagram ads. That's a whole nother rabbit hole. It is. It is. (laughs) The third thing is around leaving money on the table. So obviously you can leave money on the table by underpricing yourself. The second way you could leave money on the table is by overpaying your taxes. And we talked about the first way you can overpay your taxes, which is the penalties, right? You pay interest and penalties, and that's just no fun. The second way is by not taking all the deductions available to you. Write-offs are basically deductible expenses that are ordinary and reasonable for your business. There is no definition of what a good write-off is. It's all based on What you can defend, if you were to be audited by the IRS, which we hope we never are, is an ordinary reasonable expense for your business. There's certain rules about business meals or 50% deductible and things like that we'll talk about. But the reality is almost anything you spend that supports your career as a solo business owner qualifies as a deductible expense. But it needs to be tracked and it needs to be categorized and it needs to be reported on your tax return. And that's what I see so many entrepreneurs not do uh, because it's painful. They're spending on this credit card. They're spending from this bank account. They're going on this trip here. They're buying this book there. And at the end of the year, they don't remember what they did. And the idea of sitting down with a spreadsheet, a bunch of credit card statements, they'd rather stab themselves in the eyeball. And so they miss really, really valuable deductions. And so tracking those write-offs and Ruby Money does that automatically, but you know, there's spreadsheets you can use. That is just so, so so important. There's two write-offs that I think solo entrepreneurs miss a lot that are incredibly valuable. The first one is the home office deduction. Most of us work from home now. And if you work from home, you can write off everything related to the upkeep and maintenance of your home based on the percentage of your home office, which a lot of people don't think about. And so that's everything from lawn services, house cleaning, water, power, Wi-Fi, cell phone bank, everything that is required to keep your home operational is subject to a write-off formula. And so keeping track of those expenses and giving them to your CPA, if that's who you hire, or tracking them in Ruby Money can earn you a really massive write-off. And that it you can even write off part of your rent. You can write off snacks. If you have a little fridge in your office and you keep coffee machine and snacks in there, you can write that off. Of course, all the equipment you use, books you read, online publications you subscribe to, anything that makes you a better leader is subject to that. And so I think a lot of people overlook that stuff and they're afraid to take it. They're afraid they're going to get audited. 
you don't get what you don't ask for. And no company in the world is afraid to deduct the meals that they pay you on their yeah. property and the, mm-hmm. the offices that they lease for you. And you should feel confident to do that yourself. The second one is retirement. And for retirement, when you're self-employed, you don't have a company contributing to a 401k or a pension plan on your behalf, but you do have options. So there are IRA accounts built, designed for self-employed people, and you can you can contribute 25% of your self-employed income into those accounts. And obviously that's great, right? Because that money goes and it grows for you and it compounds over time. And I don't need to hopefully communicate to anyone the power of saving for retirement. But why it's particularly important for self-employed entrepreneurs is that those are really valuable tax deductions. Mm -hmm. So if you make $50,000 a year and you contribute $10,000 to your IRA account, you only get taxed on the $40,000. And so that's $10,000 of profit that you're hiding, you're stashing from the IRS. We call that profit stashing. You've stashed away $10,000 of that profit for future you. And there's all kinds of ways you can tap into that money if you need it. But the goal is it's tax-free profit and you're paying yourself first. It reduces your tax liability this year. And then that money grows and compounds pre-tax for the rest of your life. And so I always recommend, just as you're thinking, think about setting money aside for retirement as one of those monthly expenses, right? If you have a $200 Starbucks bill or you have a $200 subscription to an online course that you're taking, how can you match that and put that same amount in a self-employed IRA? Because it's a win-win. You save current you money, you grow future you money, and you stash that profit. So there's tons of deductions we can talk about. But I think the important thing to know is that there are specific circumstances that work on your behalf as a self-employed entrepreneur. They may sound scary, but you can easily demystify them. You can easily take advantage of them yourself. And doing so, I think we did a study and we read a study that most self-employed people miss overpay their taxes between three and $10,000. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of just money sitting on the table. And I'm a proud American, but I don't need to pay the IRS any more <laughs> than, than I'm legally obligated to. And I'd much rather take that money and invest it in my business and grow my business. And yeah. so the deductions and write-offs are so important. Mm, oh, this is such valuable information and also great reminders because as the year goes by, it's easy to forget that you're supposed to be keeping track of all that. And then that's when you, what you said happened, you end up not paying ahead of time and having the penalties or having to do payments and the interest is not good right now. So, you right. Just, you need to be thinking about growing your business. Yeah. You don't want to have to remember to think about this stuff. Yeah. The biggest piece of advice I give is create a system. Mm -hmm. right? If for you, that system is a spreadsheet, I have a great template I can send you. Uh, It's on our website on rubymoney.us. We have a great free bookkeeping template. If that's what you want to do, great. If you want to create a system where it's fully automated and it's done for you, that's why we built Ruby Money. There's other bookkeeping apps out there that you can use that are a little bit, have more bells and whistles and cost a little bit more, but we've tried to build something that's exactly what you need and nothing you don't. And if that's just not your thing and you're just like, I don't, want to look at my numbers, invest the time in finding a bookkeeper that works with people in your industry and that understands the type of expenses you have, the seasonality of your income, what your goals are. If you're not a restaurant, don't go hire your family bookkeeper that supports the local restaurants. There's so many amazing online professional solopreneurs who cater to other solopreneurs and offer bookkeeping and accounting services. The point is just find a system. And put it in place so that you take one thing off of the mental load is real. We all have a massive mental load and it takes a village to build a solo business. And, you know, Ruby Money, we're here to be the financial arm of that village. But the the headline is identify what type of support system you're going to have for yourself. Don't try to do it all yourself. No, there's no way. This is such great advice. So if people go to rubymoney.us, you said they can find this free spreadsheet to get started and also more information about the different plans. Do you have, is it a monthly? subscription to the app. Tell us more. Yeah. So our app is completely free to get started. Uh, Our bookkeeping functionality is free. You can get live tax reminders and tax bill estimates all completely free. We have a paid subscription that is $16 a month that allows you to automate your tax savings. We talked about this idea of setting aside money for quarterly taxes. So it automates your tax savings. It pays your quarterly taxes for you. 
And it also gets you free calls with our tax advisors. And they will meet with you on a quarterly basis, review your finances, answer any questions you have about anything related to running a small business Mm -hmm. and help make sure your finances are on track. And so that's our paid subscription, but there's a ton of free tools on the app. You can download it from the app store or you can create your account on rubymoney.us. And since it's January, and I I don't know when this episode is going to get published, it might not be January anymore, but we are offering a new year, new user promotion that I would love to share with your audience. They can use the code empowered and get one free month of our service. Obviously, they can use the free tools for as long as they want. But if they want to try out our subscription service and schedule a call with me and get all of their books set up for taxes, the the next quarterly tax payment is due on April 18th, which is also the day your annual taxes are due for 2023. And so if anybody wants to get a head start on that or get some support from us, they can use code empowered to get a free month off and kickstart their new year with some new great financial habits. So good. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for sharing with us. And I'll be sure to put all of that in the show notes as well. And now my final question, my million dollar question, which Mm -hmm. I suspect somewhat of the answer is going to be, but Angie, what is an empowered woman? Oh my gosh. An empowered woman to me is someone that knows how powerful they are. Yeah, that's good. And keeps track of their finances. Keeps track of their finances. But I just acknowledge as power. And so much of being a female entrepreneur is living in that state of not knowing. And so I think to be empowered, you have to have confidence that you can figure it out. You have to have confidence that you do have power. And just that mindset is what I believe is very empowering. Definitely. Oh, thank you so much. This is so, 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 so good. One for people to listen and take notes and go check out Ruby Money as well. Thank you so much, Angie, for your time. You too, Marta. It was lovely to have this conversation. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for tuning in today. I hope this episode empowered you. And if you enjoyed the show, please join the Empowered Woman community on Facebook and share with friends or leave a review on iTunes so more people can discover this empowering message. Until next time, bye.